welcome back to C1 Novel and Vocab Week 21. And let's get started. So hi, my name is Miss Kimberly. And the goal of our session is to have students understand each word in our vocabulary workbook. And to be cognizant and know some of the phrases from our novel that may be difficult for us to understand. So I'll be here as your guide and help you through it all. But what are we doing today? First, we'll be going over week 21 vocabulary. Two, go over extra example sentences. Three, in the other video, you'll go over difficult phrases from the novel. And four, after both videos, you will have to review and self-study. So why are we doing this? Why is this so important? One. We'll be going over week 21 vocabulary for vocabulary acquisition to put all these words into our word bank in our heads. By learning the definition, synonym, and antonym of a word, this can significantly improve reading comprehension and enhance your contextual usage. Next, you'll be going over example sentences with me, and these are extra, and this will help with your writing variation. By looking at a variety of example sentences with a specific vocabulary word, students can learn how to use the word in a different sentence structures and you'll be able to make fun sentences. So please, if you don't already, go ahead and get your vocabulary workbook and turn with me to week 21. And that will be on page 176. One, seven, six. Go, go, go. Page 176. The first word is absolutely. Everyone say absolutely. Good. The synonym is certainly and the antonym is mm, doubtfully. It is an adverb and it means in a complete or unlimited way or meaning definitely. Of course, absolutely. And in our TED Talks, it said, before you submit your answer, you should be absolutely sure it is correct. Meaning 100%, you're definitely, absolutely sure that you are correct. Let's read the example together. My mom absolutely hates mice and will scream if she sees one. That is absolutely me also. If I were to see a mouse, I think I would scream. I do not like him. <laughs> Over here, it says, she was absolutely certain that she had left her keys on the kitchen counter, but they were nowhere to be found. Meaning, she wasn't absolutely sure then. <laughs> uh, she was 100% sure, oh, I thought I left it there, but hmm, where is it? Maybe someone else took it? The next sentence, it says, I can absolutely promise you that this is the best ice cream in town. Uh, you guys will come and follow me and I'll say, hey, third graders, this is the best ice cream in town in Busan. I can absolutely promise you, meaning 100% sure. I'm definitely sure. Everyone say absolutely. Number two of the words is hands on, hands on. It's an adjective, and the definition says practical, related to actual practice rather than theory. So you're actually doing something with your hands. And in the book, it says, Yuri didn't go to college, but he has four years, oops, he has years of hands-on experience working as a computer programmer. So he didn't go to college, he didn't get his degree, however, he has years of hands-on experience, meaning he actually did things. Let's look at the example and read it together. Ready? Three, two, one. The children took part in a hands-on experiment during their science lesson. Very good. So if you remember, if you were here for first grade and second grade at MI, you probably did some hands-on activities during your science classes also. Let's look here. It says, he enjoys hands-on projects like building model airplanes and fixing cars in his free time. So instead of just reading a book, like what I do, 
he likes to enjoy hands-on projects and actually do stuff like build an airplane or fix some cars. Next, it says the cooking class was hands-on, allowing everyone to chop, mix, and cook their own dishes. So that's very good. It's not just watching someone cook the whole time. It was hands-on, meaning they were able to also cook for themselves. Number three, everyone say reaction. Reaction. The synonym is response and the part of speech is a noun. The definition says the way people act or feel as a result of something they hear or experience. Meaning it's how you are going to act or do or say something because of something else. Reaction. Let's read the example from the TED Talks book. It says, what was Adam's reaction when he found out he was accepted to Harvard? So how did he act? Was he surprised? Was he so happy? Was he sad? Let's read the example together. Three, two, one. Judging by her happy reaction, she received a really nice birthday present. So she opened the present, but no one else can see it yet, but her reaction was like, oh, oh my gosh, I love it. <laughs> so by judging by her reaction, they all thought that she got a really nice birthday gift. Good, let's look here. It said the reaction of the crowd was mixed. Some people cheering and the others booing. Next it says the dog's reaction to the thunderstorm was to hide under the bed shaking with fear. That's kind of like Winn-Dixie. Winn-Dixie was also afraid of the thunderstorm too. <gasps> if you didn't read it, I'm so sorry. I gave you a spoiler. Number four, everyone say assume. Assume. The synonym is guess and the antonym is no. Verb. It is to guess without proof or evidence. You're just going to think that without really knowing 100% sure. In the TED Talks it says, if she's not in class, you can assume she's sick. But that's not 100% sure, right? You can either be on vacation or maybe you had another academy to go to. You can assume she's sick means you can just think that she's sick if she's not there. Let's read the example together. Ready? I assumed the cake on the table was for me, but it was actually for my dad. So this person thought the cake was for them, but it wasn't. He assumed the meeting was canceled because no one was in the conference room. So they had a meeting at three o'clock, but then he went and nobody was there. So he's like, mm, I guess it's canceled. No one's here. Next one, it said, since the restaurant looked fancy, they assumed that it would be expensive but it was surprisingly affordable. So even though it looked really fancy inside and the food looked really delicious, it was actually quite affordable. It wasn't too expensive. Assume. Number five, everyone say whimper. Whimper. The synonym is to moan and it is a verb and it means to make a series of small, weak sounds expressing pain or unhappiness. Whimper. From our book, Because of Win Dixie, it said, he just kept beating his head against the door and whining and whimpering. Meaning, pum, 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 pum. Whimpering noises. Uh, yes, that was, Win Dixie was outside the door. Let's read the example together. Are you ready? The scared baby whimpered as she watched her parents yell at each other. Hmm, oh my, the parents were arguing and then the baby was whimpering. She was like, oh, <laughs> poor baby. Let's look here. It says, the puppy began to whimper when it couldn't find its favorite toy. So maybe some of you have a pet dog at home also and maybe could hear the dog whimper sometimes. Next, the baby started to whimper, signaling it was time for a nap. Usually when babies start to whimper, they're unhappy and they're quite cranky or sad. Or maybe they're hungry. Whimper. 
Number six, everyone say barrel. Barrel. It's a verb and it means to drive or move in a way that is so fast as to almost be out of control. So barreling. In the book it said he just stood there and Winn Dixie came barreling right toward him. That's when Winn Dixie started running after him because of being scared of the thunderstorm. Example, let's read together. The woman lost control of the car and it barreled right down the hill. Oh, that's so dangerous and so scary. Mm, the car just went really fast. Here it says, he barreled through the crowd to catch the last train of the night. Yes, the subway and metro system, it'll stop at the end of the day. So in order to catch it, he was trying to barrel through the crowd and run, 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 run. Next slide. It said, the athlete barreled toward the finish line, determined to win the race. So again, just like the man who was running for the metro or the subway station, this man was also running for the finish line, barreling. Number seven, everyone say pathological. It's a long word. One more time, pathological. It's an adjective and it means extreme in a way that is not normal. In the book, it said, he said, Opal, I believe when Dixie has a pathological fear of thunderstorms, meaning when Dixie has this huge fear of thunderstorms and it's not normal, it's a very extreme fear. Example, let's read together. I have a pathological fear of spiders. So if I see one, I'll scream and run away. Yes, a pathological fear would have that type of reaction. However, if you're just scared of a spider, you'll be like, ah! But a pathological fear, like, ah, and run away. <laughs> Let's look here. It says she had a pathological need to organize everything, even in other people's homes. So maybe she saw like a book that wasn't like really nice and tidy. She had a pathological need. She needed to do it. It's an extreme need that she needed to put everything straight and nicely. Next one. It says the dog's pathological behavior included barking at every moving object. Oh my. I'm sure that dog is barking all the time. Yikes. Number eight. Everyone say roundabout. Roundabout. The synonym is indirect and the antonym is straightforward. It is an adjective and it means not straight or straightforward, meaning it goes all the way around and goes different directions. In the book, it says, I think they're just trying to make friends with you in a roundabout way, Gloria said. This is when she was explaining about the two brothers who are not just being not being so nice to Opal. So she was like, maybe they're just trying to be friends with you, but in a roundabout way, in a different way. Example, let's read together. We took a roundabout route so we could enjoy the scenery as we drove. So instead of just going straight to whatever the destination was, they took a different roundabout and went different ways to enjoy the scenery. Let's look here. It says, she gave a roundabout answer, avoiding the main question completely. Meaning if I were to say, oh, how was your day? We're like, um, it was, it was kind of good, but it was also kind of bad, but I'm not really quite sure, but I did have a good day, but it's a roundabout answer, not really giving a straightforward answer. Next, the directions were roundabout, making it difficult to find a location. Again, going all the way around and not to the straight, direct place. Roundabout. Number nine, everyone say clank. Clank. The synonym is clatter and it is a verb. It means to make a short, loud sound like that of metal objects hitting each other. I don't have anything metal. Oh, I do have something metal in front of me. This is my new brownie maker. But like these metal things and it's a clanking noise. Clank. Um, from our book, it said, 
and some of them were clanking against each other and making a spooky kind of noise. This is when we're at Gloria Dump's tree with all the little bottles clanking, 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 hitting each other. Example, let's read together. I use stone fry pans because they don't clink loudly when I use them. I've never heard of stone fry pans before. Maybe I'll look that up later. <laughs> Let's look here. It said the gate would clink shut every time someone walked through it. So if there's a gate or a fence and you open it and then goes close and clank, clink, 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 clink. Next one, it says the construction workers would continue to clank their hammers as they were assembling the building. I should say workers, not words. The construction workers would continue to clank their hammers. Clank, clank, clank as they're assembling the building, as they're making the building. Clank. As you can tell, I kind of like that word, clank. <laughs> Number 10, everyone turn to page 178. The word is fit. Everyone say fit. It is a noun and it means a strong, sudden, physical reaction that cannot be controlled. And in the book it says, sometimes when Miss Franny was telling a story, she would have a fit. You know, there are many different types of fits that we could have, but we'll talk about that later. Let's read the example together first. Three, two, one. Our teacher started having a fit in class, so we called the school nurse. So this fit here could be something like some kind of physical reaction where they're having a hard or a tough time. Some could be when people are being very grumpy and they're having a fit. So let's look here. It says she had a fit when she found out her favorite toy was broken. So here, this person who's having a fit, they're angry. They're like, Arr! whereas the teacher one is actually like a physical fit where they're having a reaction to something. The next one, it says the dog had a fit of barking when it saw the pizza delivery man. So whenever this dog saw the pizza delivery man, he would have a fit and go barking crazy. Fit. Number 11, the word is suggestion. Everyone say suggestion. The synonym is advice, and the part of speech is a noun. The definition says, an idea that is offered to someone to consider. So you're saying, mm, why don't you do this or do that? It's a suggestion. And in the book it just said, do you have any suggestions? So let's look at the example sentence and read it together. I asked her what I should wear for my party, but she gave me no suggestions. Meaning, oh, should I wear this t-shirt or this dress, or should I wear these pants or this sweater? But the person didn't give any suggestions, meaning they didn't give any idea. Here, it says the teacher's suggestions helped him improve his essay. Very good. Here it also said, and my lots of teachers will write in green for you little suggestions like, why do you think that we're, can you explain this? These are suggestions for you to improve your essay. Next, it says the baseball player was thankful that the coach's suggestion actually helped him during the game. <gasps> Very good, so maybe the coach was like, maybe swing, swing the bat a little bit later, and then he actually listened to that suggestion and he got a home run. Next one, everyone say dramatic. Dramatic. It is an adjective and it means behaving in a way that makes someone seem much worse or more serious or more frightening than it really is. Dramatic. So meaning overdoing it. In the book it says, Amanda sighed a real big dramatic sigh and stared past me. So she's like, <sighs> instead of just a she made it really dramatic. Example, let's read together. My friend was dramatic and got upset that I didn't laugh at her joke. Oh my. So this friend here was like, oh, I can't believe you didn't laugh at my joke and became very dramatic about it. Let's read here. It says she gave a dramatic sigh, emphasizing her disappointment in not winning the contest. So kind of like the sigh and being dramatic up in the first sentence, this was also a dramatic <sighs> sigh. 
Next line it says his dramatic reaction to the small scratch on his car made everyone laugh. So he's like, oh my gosh, look how big the scratch is. But really it was like this big. So people were laughing at him. 13, our word is enlist. Everyone say enlist. It is a verb and it means to voluntarily join the military, meaning that you are doing it with your own choice. In the book it says, his daddy, Artley W. Block, had already enlisted, meaning he was joining the army or military. Let's read the example together. All of the boys in my family have enlisted in the army, meaning the grandfather, he enlisted and he signed up to be in the military. Then the dad signed up and went to the military. And then the son signed up and went to the military. All of the boys, all of the males. Here it says, my big brother decided to enlist in the army to help protect our country. Next one. You may also already be familiar with this, but it says, Korean men must enlist in military service for 18 to 2 years. 18 months to 2 years. As you already know, that's kind of a law here in Korea. You must enlist. Number 14, last word for our novel. The book is, ver I mean, the word is vermin. Everyone say vermin. And the synonym is pest. It is a noun and it means small animals or bugs which cause problems to humans by carrying disease and damaging crops or food. So vermin is like little bugs and little animals like a rat. In the book it said, and he was covered with all manner of vermin, fleas and lice. Yikes. Fleas and lice are these small little bugs that you have to need to take them out or else it'll be very very bad <laughs> example it says three two one we got a cat to deal with the vermin problem at our home so maybe this house is filled with mice and then they got a cat to try to catch the vermin as you see in the picture above here it says the farmer set traps to catch the vermin that were eating his crops. So in his farm, he set up different types of traps in order to catch him. Next, it says, she shuddered at the sight of vermin scurrying across the kitchen floor. So if you're in your kitchen and then you see a vermin scurrying, you're like, ah, I don't like it. She shuddered. <laughs> 15, let's go to our textbook words on page 179. The first word is summit. Everyone say summit. It is the peak and the antonym is the base. It is a noun and it means the top or the highest point of a mountain. And in the book it says, conditions are very harsh at the summit of Mount Everest. Yes. Up there, it's super cold, windy, and harsh. Let's read the example together. The summit of the modern horn has a unique shape. Meaning the top of that mountain has a very special and one-of-a-kind shape. Here, it says, reaching the summit of the mountain was a challenging but rewarding experience. So they went all the way to the top of the mountain mountain, the summit. Next, it says, he took a photo at the summit to capture the moment of his achievement. So when he got to the summit and he finished his hike, he's like, oh, I need to take a picture. This is so beautiful. Summit. Number 16, the word is remotely. Remotely. And this antonym is nearby. And it is an adverb, and it means from a distance. So right now, we are remotely communicating, or I'm communicating with you remotely, because we're not near each other, but you guys are watching the video, and we're far away. Um, from the book, it says, some are remotely operated vehicles, or ROVs. Take the first R and remotely, O from operated, and V from vehicles. That's why it's called an ROV. 
Example, it says the toy car can be controlled remotely, meaning from far away with our remote, it can be controlled. Did we read that together? I forgot to do the countdown. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Let's look here. It says she worked remotely from her home office, connected to her team through video calls. So yes, this person works from home, and then if they needed to talk to people in the office, they would just do a little video call remotely. Next one, it says he could monitor his home's security cameras remotely using his smartphone. Ooh, so he was able to have CCTV on his phone. Very cool. Remotely. Number 17, our word is eternal. Everyone say eternal. The synonym is endless and the antonym is limited. It is an adjective meaning having no end and lasting forever. In the book it says, they may need to relight it because sometimes the flame needs help to be eternal, meaning helping the flame go on and on and on and on and on, eternal. Let's do the example together. The eternal flame in Madrid illuminates the dark night, meaning this forever eternal light and lights up the dark night in Madrid. Let's look here. It says some stories talk about eternal life where people live forever. So if you've ever heard of the book called Tuck Everlasting, you may read it later when you're older. It talks about eternal life, meaning they won't die. Next one, it says, Grandma says that good memories are eternal and stay in our hearts forever. Meaning these good memories, they won't die. We'll always keep them in our hearts. Eternal. Number 18, the word is thaw. Thaw. And the synonym is to defrost. And the antonym would mean freeze. It is a verb and it means to become liquid or soft as a result of warming. And in the book it says, with the help of natural forces such as wind, water, freeze and thaw may be doing something intriguing. So thaw meaning the ice was melting. Let's read the example together. Wait for the frozen chicken to thaw before you start cooking dinner. So yes, if it is frozen, you don't want to just put it in the, into the oven right away. You need it to thaw, meaning get into room temperature and make all the frozen parts defrost, warm up. Let's look here. It says he could feel his fingers thaw as he entered the warm cabin after being outside. So maybe he was outside in the cold for a very long time and his hands were like frozen. He wouldn't be able to move it. And then when he got into the warm cabin, he said, ah, oh, I can actually feel my fingers and they're thawing now. Meaning warming up. Next one, it says, she let the butter thaw to room temperature for easier spreading on the bread. Yes, if you take butter right out of the refrigerator, it's quite hard and cold. So you want to leave it out for a little bit and then you can spread it on your bread. Good, thaw. Number 19, the word is result. Everyone, please go to page 180. The word is result. The synonym is outcome and the antonym is cause. It is a noun and it means something that is caused by something else that happened. So if I were to hit my finger with like a pen, the result would be that it would hurt. <laughs> Example, let's read together. As a result of her hard work, she won first place in the competition. Ooh, very good job, whoever you are. <laughs> so after all that hard work, the result was that she got first place. Let's look here. It says the doctor's treatment had a positive result, improving the patient's health significantly. So this person was able to get better and better and better. Next, it says she was pleased with the result of her dedication to the garden, which was now full of blooming flowers. So maybe in the beginning, she just planted all these seeds and then make sure that she would water them and, you know, take care of them all the time. And then now she's happy with the results of 
all the beautiful flowers there. Result. 20, our last word is efficient. Everyone say efficient. The synonym is effective and the antonym is inefficient. It is an adjective and it means performing in the best possible manner with the least waste of time and effort. Meaning you're doing something to its best possible way, however, also not wasting any time. Let's read the example together. The most efficient way to eat a banana is by peeling it. So they're saying instead of just cutting it all up and then peeling it, the most efficient way, the best way to eat a banana is to just peel it and eat it. Let's look here. It says she has an efficient way of packing her bag so everything fits perfectly. So maybe her way is not to fold her clothes, but a more efficient way, some people also do, is roll their clothes and make it tight. Next and last. It says, the new vacuum cleaner is very efficient and can clean the whole room in 10 minutes. That would be better if they could clean the whole house in 10 minutes, but I guess 10 minutes for a room is also good. <clears throat> so this new vacuum cleaner, it doesn't waste any time or anything and is able to do this best possible way of cleaning that one room in 10 minutes. Efficient. We're done! Everyone close your books! Not yet. Let's see what we have on the next slide. Yeah, there is a mission, of course. I know that's all you guys are waiting for now. So please, on a separate sheet of paper with your name in class, make a sentence using the words number 19 and number 20 in one sentence. So you have to use result and efficient in one sentence. Write that down, put it in my YouTube mission cylinder box thingy, and I will give you your prize of MI dollars. So now it is time for you to review and self-study. And this is for contextual mastery. Review all of the words again. Read it out loud, please and complete the vocabulary homework pages. Pages 181 and 182. And don't forget to write the sentence in this white box. You're just copying, okay? And that is all for this video. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.